Hello there, this is Douglas Rombaugh. If you've ever had any exposure to Linux shell scripts, you've probably seen if statements or conditional loops like while or until. And these are often associated with some interesting syntactical forms within Bash involving double square brackets or single square brackets or doubled up parentheses as well. And it's not always clear or explained in context what these things are, and perhaps more importantly, what the differences between them are, because superficially they look pretty much the same. So why would you use one versus the other? And I want to take this video to explain what these things are. So if you have never seen an if statement in Bash before, this is what they look like. You have the word if, followed by some command, any command you like, followed by a semicolon, followed by the word then, a bunch of commands or statements that will execute if this is true, talk about what that means in a minute, and then fee to terminate it. So if this thing is true, we do this stuff. If it's not, we just skip down to here and continue. That's basically how this works. There are more complex variants involving elif and else and things like that, but we're gonna keep it simple. What it means for a command to be true is that it returns zero. Every command you run in bash is going to have an exit code that exit code is going to be zero if the command completed successfully and something else if it did not. There are several exceptions, but they're rare enough that it's probably not worth talking about here. So all bash does is it executes whatever command you put here, checks the exit code. If the exit code is zero, we go into the if statement. If it's not, we don't. That's how an if statement works. And so these conditional forms that we see here are effectively just commands that return or exit with a status of zero if the comparison is true and with something else if the comparison is not. So here we see two forms of testing to see if something is a file. We have single bracket tack f, is it a file? And then the variable or string that we are checking in quotation marks like this. Uh, down here, we see the double bracket variant where the quotation marks are not necessary. Uh, you can put them if you'd like, but they don't have to be there for reasons we'll discuss. And then if you want to do numerical comparisons, here are three ways of doing it. You can use the parentheses. Note that with the double parentheses, X does not get a dollar sign. A little bit confusing. And then we have LT and LT here um, with quotes, quotes mandatory here, quotes not mandatory for the double bracket form. And then finally, one thing, one trap that you may fall into is that this uh, double bracket form actually supports less than and greater than signs, which the single bracket form doesn't. Again, we'll talk about why in a minute. Uh, but be careful because you cannot use these for numerical comparisons. So this is actually wrong. The reason is that the less than and greater than signs are going to check the lexicographic ordering of the things on either side not the numerical ordering. So it's basically a string comparison. You'll end up with things like two is greater than 10 because the number two or the, digit, the character two has a larger string value than the character one, things like that. Don't do, that, don't do it this way. Make sure you use LT if you're doing a numerical comparison. Anyway, what are the differences between all these things? Well, the single bracket form is a built-in slash binary program. So this is actually a call out to a different program called test. To demonstrate this, let me hop on out to the shell here. Uh, if we go ahead, I have just thrown a couple of things out here. So we can do this. I can say test tack f a file like that. And you'll see that it returned dollar question mark gets you the return code of the last command. It returns zero because a file is a file. Uh, however, if I were to do the same thing with a dir, you'll see we get a one as our return code because the directory is not, or rather a dir is not a file, it is in fact a directory. So that's how the test built-in works. The single square bracket is simply an alias for test. So This, this form here is identical to this form. It's just this one is using the, the square bracket notation, and then this one is calling it calling the program by name. The double 
square bracket notation is actually bash syntax. It's not a commander built in, it's part of the bash language itself. Uh, and it supports pretty much all the same stuff as the, the single square bracket, although it actually supports a little bit more. Because this double square bracket form is part of the bash language and is not a command or built in, the inputs, so to speak, the stuff inside of here, does not get processed as though it were the input to a command. So what this means is that it's not going to do all the normal string expansion stuff. So that's why we don't have to put quotation marks around it. We don't have to worry about spaces and whatnot splitting things up. That's also why we can get away with doing things like this if we had tried to use a less than sign inside of a call to test, I mean, let's just do one. So x equals 10. If I were to say test 10 or dollar x less than 10, I think you'll see the problem with using um, that particular character here. It's an input redirect. Uh, likewise for the output redirect character as well for greater than. And so that's why we see this LT and GT like that. This also allows the double square bracket form to support like double ampersand for and and double pipe for or things like that because it doesn't follow, it doesn't process the contents of the double square brackets in the same way. Now the parentheses is actually an arithmetic expansion. So you can use this parentheses thing to do a lot more than just comparisons, it supports math in general. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to, I could say four plus five like this. Uh, note that if you're going to echo the, var the value or assign it or something like that, you have to put the dollar sign in front of it. And there you see we get, we get nine. Uh, it just so happens that we can also do comparisons like that. And so if I were to get rid of this and do it as an actual comparison, there you go. You can see that works. And that one gives me the one. So the cool thing about the arithmetic expansion is it actually supports arithmetic. So you can, you can do things like four plus five and whatnot, add things and do things of that nature, which is the advantage that this has over the double square bracket syntax. And of course, just like the double square brackets, the double parenthesis arithmetic expansion is bash syntax, not a built-in or anything like that. And so again, it, it has its own internal syntax rules independent of bash. So you can do things like use these characters and also access the variable by name instead of needing to put the, put the dollar sign. So those are the three different forms of these conditions that you'll see quite commonly. Now the next obvious question is, when should you use one versus the other? And the answer is, generally speaking, in my opinion, just use the double square bracket form. So the reason why you would want to use this form with the single square bracket is if you were writing a script that is going to be broadly deployed in environments where the double square bracket might not be available. So the double square bracket is not part of the official standard necessarily, although it is implemented by most of the shells you would care about, bash, KSH, ZSH, that sort of thing. However, technically there are shells out there that someone might be using that does not support this syntax. Because the single square bracket is actually a, a program, it's a built-in, and then if it's not a built-in in the shell, it's a program itself, this thing is incredibly portable. Any computer that has that test executable installed can use this. And so that's why this still lingers around and is used. However, because it is a built-in slash external program, it's actually slower than this because it has to call out to the built-in or the, or even worse, the external program. So this double square bracket syntax is faster and it's more powerful, but it may or may not be available on every shell in existence. If you're just scripting for yourself, doesn't really matter, so just use this one, the double square brackets. And then again, I 
tend to prefer using the double square bracket form for numerical comparisons as well, as opposed to the parentheses for arithmetic expansion, unless you're in a situation where you do want to do some math as part of your comparison, in which case, go ahead and use the parentheses. One thing to be aware of as you're doing math, though, is that bash does not support floating point arithmetic. It doesn't do decimals. So if I were to take like 10 divided by 3, I'm going to get 3 as opposed to 3.33333. So do be aware of that and don't count on floating points to work in Bash. They do work in KSH. Uh, KSH has full support for floating point arithmetic, but Bash does not. And so there you go. The three different common conditional forms for if statements in Linux shell scripting, the test built-in slash external program, single bracket, the comparison operation, double square bracket, and arithmetic expansion, double parentheses. A default to the double square bracket form unless you have a specific reason not to. Well, I hope that this cleared up some potential confusion with respect to these three different forms of bash conditional expressions. As always, I hope that this video was interesting, and I will see you in the next one.